Hey Doc T here with a video blog or vlog of my blog called No Sweat. And what I'm talking about is horses that decide to stop sweating. Now, a lot of you who live in the northern latitudes or have summers that never get above 85 degrees may never have heard of no sweating or anhydrosis. And a lot of people in the United States and around the world have never experienced it. But if you have a horse that lives in the southern, uh, toward the equator, and their temperatures get to 90 degrees and above, there are a lot of horses that just shut down, they stop sweating. And it's very confusing because I I went to Cornell and they never really talked about it. There was not much written about it. The first case I ever saw was a horse that I said to the barn owner, where's the horse? And they said, it's right out there. And I'm looking, I don't see anything. She said, look harder. I'm looking and there I see two nostrils and two ears in the face of a horse above the water surface and the rest of the body was in the pond. He really knew how to take care of himself. But usually it's a horse that's panting, or I should say uh, heaving its chest, blowing hard, nostrils flared. And these horses are suffering. And management wise, you put them in front of fans or misting fans or you turn them out at night. And that seems to work on a lot of horses. Some of the anecdotal treatments that have been popular among horsemen is beer, specifically Guinness Stout. That seems to work on a lot of horses. There's also 1AC, a product that's sold specifically for anhydrous horses. Uh, the Equipatch, which helps a lot of horses. And there's other treatments that are out there from Venipulmin, uh, which is for breathing issues, and uh, prostaglandins. But the point is, no one's really come up with a cause yet. And that's frustrating, because some of these treatments that I've mentioned work on some horses some of the time. And sometimes, and most likely, it's not your horse today. And that's what I wanted to tell you about. Most of you know that we are anti-grain. And we say we're anti-grain, meaning corn, oats, wheat, wheat middlings, etc. because we've found that in some horses, these grains can become inflammatory. Much like a person who's a celiac, meaning uh, gluten, wheat gluten intolerant, they can't have any wheat gluten at all without having allergic reactions. Now there's no proof that's going on, but we're finding that horses that are being fed grain usually have a list of things going on, which I'm gonna go over a little bit later. But in our effort to take horses off grain, we started something called the No Grain Challenge. And you can find the um, whole study on, or the, the details of this at the equinepractice.com forward slash grain, and you can read all about it. But some of those people who have gone on the No Wheat no grain challenge for two weeks have found out that in day three to day four their non-sweating horse starts to sweat so this is an unexpected uh, surprise and we're delighted because we've tried this on several horses that are non-sweaters and sure enough between three and four days they start sweating so what do you do step one stop feeding your horse all grains take the carrots the apples the sugar cubes away as well the red salt licks that have um, corn syrup and molasses in it. Take these forms of simple sugars away and stick only to hay and grass. If you don't have any grass, don't worry about it. Uh, in other words, pasture. Uh, salt, and make sure it's just regular Himalayan salt or raw salt, that'll work fine. And plenty of water. So it's hay and pasture, salt and water, and that's it. And watch what happens over the next 10 to 14 days. Um, but actually in day two, uh, pardon me, three to four, you're gonna find that your non-sweating horse will start to sweat again. At least that's what we're hoping for. So we're actually asking for your help. We need more people to try this and to and confirm. So step one, take your horse off grain. Step two, uh, observe your horse for uh, the next four days or so. And step three, come back to the blog, the written blog, which is the equinepractice.com forward slash no, N-O, dash, sweat, S-W-E-A-T. That's equinepractice.com forward slash no, dash, sweat. And it'll take you to the blog. And in the comments section, go ahead and, and write your findings. If you find that it didn't work, say so. If you find that it did work or to what degree, say so. So we all have some um, uh, benefit of, of your experience. So um, I'm thinking that it's gut inflammation from all sorts of things that are fed to these horses. I think there's an association to it, but I can't ex explain the mechanism. But as a horseman, 
and I know all of you guys out there want to be the best horsemen and do the best thing for your horse. You want to find an effective treatment that's realistic and reasonable to do. And I think giving, taking your horse off grain is going to help. Now, get, let me give you a list of some of the other things that can occur with horses that are grain intolerant and are showing some sort of malaise or inflammation from or some sort of gut leakage problems uh, due to grain. And I'm going to look down here and read my list because I don't want to miss one. The first one I find is poor keepers, poor doers, those horses that you feed all the grain to and they just don't seem to gain any weight. These horses are virtually grain intolerant and if you take them off grain and it's a little bit more complicated than just taking them off grain but if you just take them off the grain, step one, you're going to find these horses relax and you're going to see them start to gain some weight and there's some tricks as, as far as getting some more weight on them but they can actually become fat by taking them off the grain. And that's a real wake-up call to a lot of people. There's got to be something going on with the grain if it's causing a horse that's being fed pounds and pounds of grain not to actually gain weight. See what I'm saying? Okay, um, chronic non-surgical colics where they just are off a little bit, spasmodic. You get the uh, vet out there, they give some anti-inflammatories. The horse seems to get better. Well, why is this horse having this non-inflammatory, or pardon me, this non-surgical colic? And I'm suggesting that it could be due to inflammation from grain and sugars. This includes carrots, guys. I'm telling you, carrots, I've seen horses, uh, until you take the carrots away or the red salt licks, they still have inflammation. Some horses are very sensitive to simple sugars. So you want to get away from that. So sugar cubes, cookies, anything wheat middlings, some of your supplements that you give are loaded with corn or uh, wheat middlings. Get away from those things. Just pasture, grass, salt, and water for 10 to 14 days. And I promise you, in the two week challenge, you're gonna see a difference in your horse. And if you don't, please let me know about it. Here are a couple other things. Does your horse squirt uh, when he defecates? You know when the balls of manure come out and there's a little bit of dribble coming down uh, the cheeks of the horse? Or maybe he puts himself up against the stall wall and the dribble goes down the wall and you see all that manure staining? Or worse yet, he, d he delivers cow flops instead of form balls. This is all a uh, hindgut inflammation that can be eliminated if you give this horse a chance to calm the inflammation that's going on the hindgut. Uh, girthiness. You put the uh, girth on, you tighten it up, and the horse stomps its feet, swishes its tail, turns around and looks at you, sometimes even bites at you. This is called girthiness. And I've seen it eliminated by horses going off grain. Same thing with brushing. If you're brushing your horse, again, the tail swishes, the ears go back, he seems to, uh, uncomfortable shifting his feet, uh, or clipping the horse. He just doesn't like it. You're body clipping and he's just nervous. Try taking him off the grain for two weeks and see what happens. I've had horses um, go from impossible to, to clip to you can stand there ground tied and you clip them all day and they have no problems. Same with trying to load a horse on a trailer. They're saying no way, they balk, I'm not getting on that thing. That's because they know once they get on there and you start moving down the road and they start bouncing up and down on the road, it affects the gut just like you getting in a plane and it makes you feel bad. Um, it's just inflammation in the gut and we've seen some horses that were impossible to load suddenly uh, load just fine throw the rope up over their neck and say get and they go right up um, Difficult behavior on the ground or while riding as you start to ask the horse to move from a walk to a trot or maybe a canter they do a couple of bucks or crow hops or uh, they even can get worse, sometimes run away with you. These are all horses that as you're moving them and shaking their abdomen, they're saying, no, this is just uncomfortable. Give it a try. It costs you nothing and the benefits can be huge. Um, and of course, non-sweating, if you've got a horse that's non-sweating. So those are, is a pretty complete list. There might be some others that I forgot about, but we've seen all these things suddenly cure themselves. So give it a try. It's only two weeks. Go to the equine practice, theequinepractice.com forward slash grain, and you'll be able to see the whole um, uh, explanation of why I don't believe in, in feeding horses grain and what it can actually do, including leakage or proteins from the gut through leaky gut syndrome. So take the challenge, there's no harm, and then um, write us, write, you know, send us your results. Let, uh, give us uh, permission to post them or just go ahead and post them on the blog. That's automatic permission to post them. And um, get some other people to find out what's going on. So that's my blog or vlog on no sweat. And I appreciate you taking the time, taking a look. And I'll um, talk to you another day. Thanks, bye.